Hi, my name is Katarina Sullivan and I would like to welcome you to my YouTube channel. Today I am bringing you a special episode of how the Australian political system works because we are coming up to the ACT elections in Canberra, ACT, obviously. Also, I have two very sassy bunnies behind me that have decided it's not okay that I filmed today and that they want the attention. So I'm sorry if they start like bashing on the cage, but they're, I don't know why they need so much attention today. The reason I'm doing a special video for the ACT election is firstly, because yes, I am incredibly biased because I live in the ACT, but also because we have a very different, unique political system here, which the only people in Australia that will understand just how weird our system is are Tasmanians. So we operate off the Hare Clark system. Now Hare Clark is named after two old white men as pretty much everything in Australia is named after Hare and Clark. So one was an attorney general and the other was an English barrister from memory. Basically they came up with this idea that instead of electing one person per electorate, you would elect a number of people per electorate. So in the ACT, and I'm pretty sure it's the same in Tasmania, um, there are 25 seats up for grabs. Of course, ACT is unicameral, so we just have the Legislative Assembly, whereas Tasmania is bicameral, so I'm pretty sure it's the House of Parliament that is on the Hare Clark system and then the Legislative Council is different. In the House of Parliament and Legislative Assembly, there are 25 seats up for grabs, five electorates, five members per electorate. So when we go to the polls in ACT, we're actually voting for five people to represent us. There's positives and negatives. I have interviewed a few ACT politicians on my podcast, Politics Done Differently, which the link is in the description below. And they talk about what they see as the benefits and drawbacks are for them in their career. As someone who lives in a hair clerk system, I love it because I have five people to annoy instead of just one. Um, and it means that if I do annoy someone too much, I can always go to another person. But lucky for me, my representatives are really cool and no one's got annoyed at me yet, despite how persistent I might be. <laughs> another benefit about the Hair Clark system is that if you are in a safe liberal seat, but you align with Labour, you can always reach out to one member of a certain party. And vice versa, if you're in a safe Labour seat and you identify with Liberal, you can reach out to your Liberal members because for example, my electorate, there's two Liberal, two Labour and one Greens member that represent me. So I can speak to anyone about any concerns. It also means that if I have a concern that I believe is going to align with the Greens party a little bit more, I can approach the Greens member. Or if I have a concern that's going to appeal to a Labour member or a Liberal member more, I can then contact that representative respectively of the issue. So it gives me a little bit of leeway in terms of the fact that I can contact different people about different issues. I have more contacts. There's a greater chance of things getting done because there are five people that I'm telling, hey, help me with this, or hey, can you please answer this question? And if it is an issue that they all agree that something needs to be done, then it's five voices in parliament about it. So it's kind of a good system. The drawbacks are that sometimes a politician can't be across everyone's issue because they're going to different people. So I might have a particular issue and I go to representative A um, and then representative B is speaking on that same issue but doesn't have the input from me because I've gone to a different politician about it. So it can have its drawbacks but for the most part for me I love it. Um, but make sure you check out some of our podcast interviews with the ACT politicians to see what they think from their point of view. So last year was the 2019 federal election and I did a bunch of how to vote videos as in like not how you should be voting but how to fill out a ballot paper and I'm going to do a quick crash course in it today so you understand. Don't be noisy. Mommy is working. Last I heard, they were estimating about 70 to 80% of Canberrans are going to pre-poll. I can hear Wesley in the background. Just 
Shush. That means that there's a lot of people that are going to fill out their ballot papers in the next few weeks. So that's why I'm getting this video in early. The election date is October 17th. Everyone should have received something in the mail if you are in Canberra. If you haven't, make sure you contact Elections ACT. They're at elections.act.gov.au and they'll be able to provide you some information, help you out a bit. If you go onto their website, they even have a sample ballot paper for you to look at for your electorate. So if you head to the homepage and click on information for voters, you can scroll down and you'll see the five electorates, Brenda Bella, Currajong, Murrumbidgee, Jinandera and Yerubi. Yes. I don't know why I'm so proud of that. I always mix them up. So my electorate is Courage On. If I go to Courage On, it will bring up the sample ballot paper. So you've got columns of parties and then the representatives from each party with a big box next to them. You have to fill out numbers one to five. Why five? Because we have five representatives per electorate. You can fill out six and further. The main thing is to make sure you fill out one to five. So how do you get the people elected you want to elect? Well, firstly, put a number one next to the person that you really want to be elected, obviously. Make sure you fill out one, two, three, four, five. I know it sounds silly, but you need to make sure that you don't skip numbers and you don't do double numbers. You need to fill out one, two, three, four, five. So you start with the person you want the most, then the second most, then the third, fourth, fifth, and so on and so forth. If there is someone that you really, really don't want in, you can go through all the numbers all the way to the very end of how many candidates there are, but I would recommend if there's someone you really, really don't want in, don't put anything next to them. The reason for this is that as you put more and more numbers in, those votes are still counted as votes. Whereas if there's someone that doesn't have any numbers next to them, then they won't get any votes. I need to be careful with giving advice on how to vote. I'm going to explain how I'm planning on voting without using party names or candidate names so you can understand sort of how you might want to vote. I would first choose my party or independent candidate that I want to see voted the most. If it's an independent candidate, I'd put my number one next to them. If it's a party, I would choose the top person from that party and then number the rest. So if there's three candidates in the party, I do one, two, three. I would then move on to my second preference, third preference, fourth preference, whether it's parties or individual candidates. I would basically put a number in any box next to a person that I wouldn't be too mad if they got in. For example, I might be okay with one of the major parties getting in or one of the minor parties getting in, even though they're not my first preference. But I would be like, you know what? They're all right. So I'd put a number in that box. The only box I would leave blank is the one of the party or candidate or candidates that I do not want to get in whatsoever, ever and ever. Amen. I hope that makes sense. Make sure you do your first preference. One to five. One, two, three, four, five. That's the most important part of it. There are a few suburbs that have changed since the last election, so please make sure that you double check to make sure what electorate you're in. The elections.act.gov.au website does have a map on it to show where the boundaries are. But on top of that, you can also call or get your hands on one of those flyers that I was talking about. There is a big push for postal voting and pre-polling at this election because of COVID-19. So if you can vote early or you don't feel comfortable going into a polling center and you want to vote by postal vote, please make sure you check out the elections.act.gov.au website to see how you can do that. There's a number of early polling centers open across ACT um, and there's a map of those on that same website. I'm just gonna keep telling you to go to this website because it's got all the information you need. What happens if you don't vote? Well, I'll be disappointed and that's what you really should be concerned about. Also, you may get a fine, also, you may receive judgment from your really cool friends that did go out and vote because it's your civic responsibility. So just vote. It's You've got heaps of time. You've got up until October 17th to get to a polling center. And there's so many around Canberra, so I don't wanna hear any excuses about it. I couldn't make it. Just go out and do it. Pro tip, you are encouraged over and over and over to fill out numbers one, two, three, four, five. If you only vote with a number one, your vote will still be counted. 
but you won't be making the most of your vote because you're meant to be voting in five representatives and you'll only be voting for one. So if you do get to election day and you're so overwhelmed and you just put a one on the ballot paper and then you freak out, it's not like the House of Representatives at the federal election where if you don't fill out all the numbers, you don't get counted. They're a little bit lenient over here. They will count, you're just number one. Don't put like a number six and only a number six. Obviously that not good idea. I will encourage you over and over again to fill out one to five and more if you want to. You're totally allowed to put a number next to every single candidate. This is a question I got asked so much last year. What happens if I make a mistake? It is totally okay. The world hasn't ended. You haven't just lost all of your responsibilities. You haven't forfeited the opportunity that you have to vote. You just need to speak to someone at the polling center and say, hey, I'm a human, I made an error. Happens to everyone. Can't please get a new piece of paper, but make sure you take the piece of paper that you made a mistake on back. Otherwise they'll be like, hmm, are they trying to vote twice? Is this the US election? Is there voter fraud happening? I don't know if voter fraud's happening at the US election. I'm staying out of that one. It's just a fun topic. There's also going to be electronic voting this year. Uh... <laughs> I'm freaking out about it. I don't, I don't like the whole idea of electronic voting, but the robots are coming. It's happening. I got to get on board. It's available at pre-polling stations. I don't know if it's going to be available on election day. I can find that one out. If any, if you really want to know, drop it in the comment section and I can reply to you. Um, but yeah, I'll have to check. Basically with electronic voting, you get given an e-voting card and you head over to a voting touch screen. From there, you use the e-voting card to scan and then you start voting as you normally would via a touch screen. Basically the reason this is preferable for some people is that if you are nervous and you're scared you're gonna make a mistake, you can undo or you can just start over. So it's kind of cool, it's like you can control Z or delete all. Like it's uh, not a bad thing. On top of that, if you need help, you just make sure you touch hide my vote, which will then hide your vote, obviously, um, and put up your hand and someone will come and help you. Once you're finished, you hit next. The candidates will come up in the order that you've selected them. Go over them, make sure that they're okay. If they're not okay, hit make changes. So you can go back and make changes. Um, if they are okay, you just scan the card again from memory um, and then you're done. You're free to go. And uh, yeah. No democracy sausage because I'm pretty sure this is only available at pre-polling. Maybe on the day. I don't know. It's so weird this year. There's like electronic booths and there's COVID and I don't know. I don't like change. If you are someone living with a disability, make sure you speak to someone at the pre-polling center about what you need to support you in your voting process. They do have special audio facilities if you are blind or vision impaired. They have everything to make sure that everyone has equal access to opportunities to vote. So how are these votes counted? Well, I don't know if you remember last year I did that how to vote in the Senate and how they work out the Senate voting system video and I wanted to cry. Uh, yeah, this is pretty much the same. <laughs> so basically, they work out a quota, which is the number that you need to achieve in order to be elected. So the way they work out the quota is the number of valid votes divided by the number of vacancies plus one. So in both the ACT and Tasmanian Hair Clark system, it is six because it's five vacancies plus one. And then that whole number divided plus one on the end. So what you're looking for is just over one sixth of the number of valid votes. Why are preferences so important? Well, this is where it comes in. Once the candidate has fulfilled the quota, their votes, surplus votes, then go to second preferences. You don't count. If someone gets, you know, 50,000 of first preference votes, but the quota needed is only 20,000. I'm just using random numbers. I actually don't know what I'm talking about. They don't count all 50,000 for that member. 
they get rolled over to the second preference, if that makes sense. So once all the surplus votes have been distributed and there's still not enough people filling vacancies, they take the candidate with the lowest amount of votes, cross them off the list, and then take their preferences and distribute them among the members. So basically at some point, all five candidates are gonna reach the quota, whether it's through first preference votes or through the preferences after that. This is why your preferences are so important is because if you just vote one for a candidate that's already gotten in, then your vote's just scrunched up and thrown in the bin like it's done. Whereas if you've voted for a candidate that's reached the quota, but you've put numbers 10, 10 to two, two to 10, remember we're going in order, two to 10 <laughs> on the ballot paper, then all of those preferences are counted and distributed. It's a complicated system. It works somehow, it works, I don't know, but it does make sense once you get into the nitty gritty. I'm just trying to give you a really quick rundown of how this works. If the maths is still like boggling your mind, there is a little section on the elections ACT website that sort of explains it in a little bit more detail with, you know, math formulas and everything. So you can check that out. The only thing you need to understand is to fill out your preferences, to make your vote count 100%. I think I've covered pretty much everything about the ACT election. The hair clock system, it's very sort of, once you understand it, you understand it. Um, there's not too much depth to go into about it. I'd be interested to hear if there are any Tasmanian subscribers to my channel, what you think of the hair clock system in Tasmania, whether or not it works. And of course, if there's Canberran subscribers and you guys just wanna have your opinion out there as all Canberrans do, because we're very opinionated people, <laughs> especially when it comes to politics, uh, please drop a comment in the comment section. If you don't live in a hair clock system and you are confused or you want to throw in your opinion about the hair clock system or if you'd like to see the hair clock system used in your state or territory or if you just have any questions about the video or if you just want to i don't know have a chat say hi uh everyone's going through mental health stress at the moment so if you do just want to drop a comment to have someone to talk to do it this is a safe space for everyone um and we're really encouraging connection at this time that is a pretty polarizing time for everyone it sucks last messages before i go big things happening next week uh firstly i've released the survey <laughs> it's the most important part please do the survey it is asking you if you had to choose where your taxpayer dollars went where would you distribute them the survey is on my website which is in the link below and i'll also include a link straight to the website no, straight to the survey as well. The reason I'm doing the survey is because it is budget night on Tuesday night and I am so excited. I'm gonna have a little night, I'm gonna sit down, get all the food ready, get a glass of wine and watch the budget being delivered. Budget night is a big night, especially this year with coronavirus. They will be delivering a deficit because of bushfires and coronavirus and everything else that has happened, but they'll be telling us sort of where the tax cuts are going to come to support Australians and where this money's gonna come from that we can actually buy ourselves out of this recession, hopefully. So yeah, make sure you tune into that, but do the survey first, because that's more important than the budget night. Sorry, Josh Frydenberg, but it's true. But yeah, budget night is a big deal, and I will be doing a video next week, hopefully. This is like two weeks in a row I'm doing videos, I'm loving it. A little bit of pressure, but it's fine. And then hopefully next week I'll do a video breaking down the budget. In the meantime, Stay cool, stay in school. Actually, it's school holidays, don't stay in school. Go home, go have some fun. Be nice to your parents. If you're a kid, if you're a parent, be nice to your kids. Um, <laughs> school holidays are a tough time, especially when everyone's been doing a bit of online schooling and homeschooling this year because of the pandemic. Uh, but welcome the opportunity to spend time with loved ones, family members. I'm really bad at ending these videos. Also just ask anyone that I'm friends with. I'm really bad at saying goodbye. I don't know how to finish a conversation and leave. Um, or like when someone's leaving my house, I'm like, oh, okay. And I'm just gonna talk to you for another three hours because it's really awkward. You go in and I don't know how to end this. And I have the same thing with videos. So I'm just gonna, like, I'm just gonna press the button at some point just to stop this. It's really uncomfortable. That's why I'm so weird at the end of videos, just in case you ever wanted to know. I'm like this in real life, but yeah. Thanks for joining. Um, please share the video, comment, subscribe to my channel, 
do social media things like follow and like content and engage in stuff and yeah do the survey that's all i care about do the survey thanks i love you guys bye